Gather round, children, gather round. It's story time with just the little writer. In case you didn't know, that's me. Inside comes out at night. Chauncey stood still and listened while his parents berated him. Like they did every time they came to visit. Every other Saturday, they came to check up on him, which means they spent the entire evening criticizing absolutely everything about him. His clothes weren't ironed the right way. His posture wasn't perfectly straight. His glasses and watch didn't match. The vacuum lines in the carpet were crooked. There were two whole specks of dust in the corner of the clothes closet. On and on they went. At work, things were no better. His boss always had at least one nitpick per day. From Monday through Friday, Chauncey had to listen to complaints and criticism all day long. Every Saturday now spent being dragged down by his parents, Chauncey spent those days being dragged by his sister. His sister always had the same questions. Why don't you have a girlfriend? What are you waiting for to get married? Don't you want to have kids before you're too old? Chauncey wished that he could be a kid again, a kid with a better family. He missed his youth and could only indulge his inner child when no one else was around. When alone, he could play video games, eat junk, be lazy and loud. Around the age of 20, Chauncey discovered intentional dreaming. He could make his dreams what he wanted them to be. He could be a superhero or a knight, a chef or a magician. His parents didn't know, but Chauncey had gotten involved with the occult. In that coat closet, with two whole specks of dust, there was a hidden compartment. He kept his true self hidden there. Chauncey would never allow his parents or his sister to know the real him. They would never shut up. One Saturday, after listening to his mother point out all of his faults, Chauncey pretended to be ill so they would leave early. He pulled out his witchy books and played things. Just for fun, he put a spell on himself. The spell was meant for sleepwalkers, but Chauncey customized it to make his inner child a separate entity. He went to bed and intentionally dreamed of stabbing his parents and sister to death. He would never do it in real life. Sunday morning, Chauncey was startled awake by loud banging on his door. He opened it and two police officers invited themselves in. What's wrong, Chauncey said. The officers looked at each other before speaking. They introduced themselves as Carter and Chase. Chase held up a drawing of a boy around eight years old wearing khaki pants, a white polo shirt, loafers, and silver-rimmed glasses. Do you know this boy? Carter said. Chauncey nodded enthusiastically. It's me. Chase looked at the picture himself. It can't be you, he said. This was drawn this morning based on statements from the neighbors. Chauncey was confused. Which neighbors? Beside him or across the street? He never talked to any of them and certainly never showed them his school pictures. Which neighbors, Chauncey said. And what was the statement in regard to? Chase and Carter glanced at each other again. Your parents were found stabbed to death by a neighbor, Carter said. This little boy walked right by her. Chase sighed. We got a call that he was seen at your sister's house as well. We got there too late. Sorry. Chauncey put on a show. He cried and collapsed to the floor, as if overcome with grief. Finally. He was finally rid of them. After the officers left, Chauncey went on the hunt for his school pictures. His mother would only let him keep a wallet size from each grade. There, in his personal photo albums, on the page for grade three, he found it. A boy around eight years old, wearing khaki pants, a white polo shirt, and silver rimmed glasses. The boy was smiling. Chauncey never smiled in his pictures, but he smiled in real life for the first time in years.